Hello everyone, let's start with the tutorial. Today we are going to start with the last tutorial of the open call. In the first tutorial we learn about the importance of retopology, a necessary process so that all users can see your designs in the metaverse. Last week our designer Gerardo explained to us how to do the texturing process. And today we are going to see how to prepare all the necessary files to deliver your designs well. We also see how to how to make a little video um, to show the world design. Um, then Gerardo will answer all the questions you have uh, about the three tutorials or the events. So welcome Gerardo, are you ready to start? Uh, thank you Alice, let's begin. As we talk about uh, on the past uh, two sessions, the uh, most important file uh, to prepare the open call is this file. This is the main file, it's called main open call. When you download, it's a blend file. Uh, in case uh, you're still wondering, you don't have to use Blender, but we uh, provide a blend file for you to, to use. So, uh, starting from this file, uh, the first uh, two sessions, we talk about how we need to, pre to do the retopology, when you start from, uh, from Avelus Designer, how you export the geometry, then we did uh, a few modifications to the to the meshes. Once again, this is more or less uh, a review. We started from this. This is coming from a simulation software. Then we more or less did a few retopology work on the fly, and we ended with something like this. And this is a highly optimized mesh. This would be the basic retopology. If you want to learn more about retopology, you can go to the first uh, open call when we show all the process. Uh, after that, uh, we did a, we worked a little bit with the materials. Uh, for example, we 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 know that we can have different materials IDs. What do I mean by different materials ID? We we can have different material setups on the same mesh. This is totally possible, but uh, we, if you want to have more complex designs, what we need to do is the proper UV mapping. The proper UV mapping is laying on a flat plane all the, all the geometry so we can assign a proper texture. This is what we did on the second stream if you want to check it out. So, let's say uh, we have everything set up Uh, I, I have it there just uh, for the purpose of showing, but let's say this is our main file and we do the assemble. In this case, I what I did was I opened all the files I, I have already prepared. We show uh, the painter workflow. What we did was I went to import, import, I opened the OBG or the FBX. Then what I did was I selected uh, the pieces I wanted to give texture. This is a, a very basic workflow. I selected the textures and then I link in the texture to the object. In case you are wondering, these are the textures mm. I got from Sustan Painter, the program uh, we saw the other day, and then I imported the textures and drag and drop and I assigned those textures to the materials. One thing to keep in mind is that it's very important how uh, I set up these nodes or how I set up this in. The two main nodes are the base color or the albedo and the normal and the normal node. This is the normal map. This map is, for example, this map in this case. So one thing to keep in mind is to assign this node properly. If you're using Blender, what you need to do is to assign a normal map. There is also another thing we talked about uh, the other day is that how important is to have a proper normal map because if you see the image you can see that when I add the normal map it will be a very huge change in the geometry. Can you see all the wrinkles, all the pull and push on the geometry but th those are not real geometry so uh, once again, to recap a little bit, this is why we do all this process, to have more or less the same resolution that we have with the simulated high poly mesh on a very low poly mesh optimized to be visualized in real time. This is the why. 
So, let's say we have everything set up. I have this. Uh, I have my uh, my avatar. Uh, one thing that can happen is you can have a geometry going outside the avatar, and then you will have to make a decision. This will be very common once you uh, finalize your project. You can, for example, modify. In this case, you can go to a sculpt mode. To go to sculpt mode, you will change your OS to a sculpt. Then you go to sculpt mode, and then you can start moving, pulling, and pushing the geometry. For example, this will more or less do the fixing. But there is also another way to do it. Let's say, for example, you landed the silhouette. You are very happy with this silhouette. This is the silhouette. This is my design. What you can also do, for example, is you can hide the parts of the avatar that you don't want to be seen in the render. So, two things to keep in mind here. This is more or less like a workflow tip. Uh, in this case, I'm selecting the body, and then I apply a modifier that is called mask. This mo modifier, what it does, I have it disabled right now. You can see. It will hide the parts of the geometry. I will show you. Let me hide the, the shoes, the top, and the hair. No, the hair, no. The bottom. Then, if I disable the modifier, this will be the mannequin. And then, if I enable the modifier, I will be uh, hiding all the all the parts I want to hide. How I make uh, the asset disappear or appear this way? I don't want to get a little bit too technical, but just bear with me for a little while. What I do is I go to edit mode. For example, I make a new vertex group. In this scale, I will call this mask 2. And then I select the vertex I want to uh, to utilize with a, with a mask or the vertex I want to keep in the mask. So for example, I select something like this. I'm just holding shift to select, very normal standard. Then what I will also be doing, I will show you why I'm doing this. Then I'm going to assign. Then I will have, for example, I will have mask one. We have this selected, so this will be kept. This one, and in mask two, I will have this. So, if I go once again to object mode and go to modifier, and I enable the mask, right now it's working properly because I have assigned mask one. I'm looking at this mask one, and if I change to mask two, the one we already made. The only thing that will be shown will be this. Why? Once again, because in edit mode, I assign it to mask 2. I can go to select and visualize. I assign it to mask 2 those uh, polygons. So this is the point of reference to apply the modifier. OK. So this will come useful uh, when you try to do the turntables of the renders. I will, I will, we will also talk about that. So. Uh, right now, I will go back to mask one, so I can have something like this. So, uh, also keep in mind that uh, there are two buttons on the modifier. The one is to make it visible on the viewport. This is the viewport, and the other one will be to make it visible on the render. And we don't want, for example, we want the modifier to be applied in the render. I will show you why in just uh, a few minutes. So, we have something like this. And using the modify, you can use whatever you want. It's fine. So now we have something like this. We have something like this. We have something like this. So uh, one last thing uh, before we move from this to the other scene will be to contemplate our our work. What we did in the last two sessions, we went from this. That's a very high poly, unorganized, and not optimized mesh. We went from this to this, and this is a very high optimized mesh to work with the avatars. So, uh, once you are at this point, this is this scene will be ready to go. This is ready to be submitted to the to the open call. This will be one of the files, not all of them. So you have this file. Let's say what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to select everything. Click, click, click. I'm going to hit Control C, Command C. It's the same. Then I'm going to open the other file that we provide. I'm going to search by the folders I downloaded from the open call. 
Uh, Gerardo, one question. Now that you are mentioning uh, the files, um, it is mandatory to send Marvelous Designer and close read the files? Yes. Uh, if, if, if you started the project with one of those applications, we encourage uh, you to send those files. Okay. The, this is just in case uh, you already submitted and we need to check everything, we can access uh, your file. If you didn't use any uh, of those app and you started, for example, in Blender, it's not needed. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So let's continue, for example. And this is the other file we provide. So this is how uh, I will show you how uh, we do the still image and how uh, we do the turntable render. So this is the proper way. Um, I, I'm not the one, maybe I want to say. Uh, okay, we have this. So what do we need to notice uh, from this scene? This scene has a, a very specific lighting, lighting setup. Uh, we should aim to preserve the lighting setup. This is because we have uh, we aim to have uh, all the submissions uh, with the same with the same lighting. So this lighting should not be moved, but this setup can be replicated on another software. For example, uh, if you go to the documentation, doo -doo 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 -doo, you can go to the lighting setup. It should be over here, and then you can see how uh, we work the light. So you can replicate. You can assign two area light. You can assign one camera with the same field of view, and then you can also utilize utilize the same uh, images as an as an environment image. So those files are provided. Those files are open source for you to use. You can use any uh, digital creation uh, content tool you want. So now, if we go back to the scene, we can see that we have this setup. We have the HDR image already set up. This is the image. This is the image. For example, if I go over here, we have the image. And then what we did was we set up a blank uh, background. So we don't actually see the image, but uh, we have the effect of the image. Then we set up, let me show you like this. So this is the image we are using. But we did is we added a blank a w sorry, a, a white background, and then we mix it both. So we have the effects of light without seeing the environment. And then we end with something like this. OK, let's continue a little bit. So we have that as our default as our default ambient light. Then we add the two backlights, two backlight, two area lights to give some reflections and to give some backlight backlighting to the to the garment. So now if I add the garments, uh, what I just did was press uh, Control V to paste. So what I'm doing right now, for example, I'm trying to set everything up. Just pay a little bit of attention how I'm doing this. I will go very slowly. You will probably will end with something like this. What you will want to do is you want to select one of the armatures. If it happened that you don't have the armature, it doesn't matter because you will have it already outside. It's, uh, it's fine. So and right now. We can start uh, preparing uh, our asset. The only thing that is left to do, for example, would be to parent this asset. These are my new asset. I need to parent them to the empty. So if I go over here, you can see the empty. I can hit uh, Control P and I can parent them. So I will have something like this. Now, if I rotate, everything will rotate together. Now, let's say. I have this. Once again, what I did was I'm going a little back so I can explain a little I can explain it once again. I select all the assets, I hit the my empty. This is the empty. Why is the empty important? What is this? Because this has the rotation. If I go to the timeline and I scroll, you will see that the empty is rotating. So if I go to the start of the of the timeline and I hit uh, Control V to get my asset, my asset will not rotate because they need to be linked to the empty. So how do I link them? This way. I select the asset, then I hit the empty, Control P, then I hit Object. Now everything will work together. Now, 
let's say I want to keep mo moving forward to prepare my final asset. We will have something like this. Then uh, I will need to do what we did before. For example, I will have my body. This will be my body. And maybe I want to hide parts of the body. I will do it really fast, but it will be more or less the same procedure. I will select the things I want to keep visible. In this case, let's, let's say, for example, I want to keep this visible, this visible, something like this. I don't have to be very specific, something like this, maybe. You take your time, don't do it like me. And, sh and just selecting the things I want to be shown in the render. Then I will have this, perfect. Once I have this, I'm going to, on edit mode over here, I'm going to this icon and I'm going to add a new vertex loop. Uh, yes, a new vertex group. I will call this group as we did with the, uh, with the other file. I will call this group mask. Now I will hit assign. Just make sure that if you are here and you go to edit mode, you deselect and you hit select the thing that you want are selected just to be sure then after that you go to the to the modifier properties and once again we are going to see this doesn't matter we are going to see we are going to mask we are going to see mask perfect now i'm going to assign i'm going to look through all the vertex group and i'm going to look for mask then i will have something like this and then i will end with this result now what will happen if it uh, is something like this is happening it's common what what you need to do for example maybe you can select this loop and you can remove this loop it's a matter of going a little bit back and forth you once again you go to edit mode and you hit remove so if i go outside it will look much better now perfect we are ready to go we are getting closer to close to finalize our project then we have this now this is more or less to have the proper fitting, but keep in mind that at the end we will only be rendering the garments, but you at least you need to have uh, the proper fitting for your for your piece. So, okay, let's say we are here and we are ready to take the renders. So, what, what you want is first, let's check the documentation over here. Let's say, what do we need to submit? Okay, we, the blend, the blend, the OBG, the FX, this is the file we submitted, and then this will be the final uh, files we need to submit. It will be these images, 2000 by 2000, and it will also be a turntable by 2000 by 2000. So, this is how we make those images using our Blender file. The first thing will be to grab an steel image. This is super easy because we are ready to go. What we need to go, what we need to do is everything should be already set up because for example if you want if you hit the camera you won't be able to move the camera because it's already locked you can see that everything is locked so there is uh, no issue about that just hit the render and you're ready to go now if i go over here i go to render render images it will be really fast anyways but uh, i want to show you the setup in this case that can happen to you and this is a very common issue and i wanted to show you is what will happen if i'm getting the avatar okay how do i get rid of the avatar to only show my design this is how we do it we make sure that we are disabled this option this option will hide the body on the render but not on the viewport if i want to hide them both i just do this then if i hit render again everything should be ready to go now last step i want to make sure i go to images save images and then i export how do i export i select png rgb is fine and then i save my file open call design still you get it this will be the static images the static image everything is already set up you have the proper size size on your uh, on your file so once again if you want uh, for example uh, to use another software you can do it as long as you respect the proper lighting you can do it also try to not 
uh, modify the lighting in the same Blender file. Everything is ready to go. Don't modify the scene, just hit render. Get you design to the scene and render it. Okay, we got this. Now, uh, one last time, to have your avatar uh, do the turnaround, do the proper 360, what, we need, what you need to do is you need to parent this to the gizmo. To parent, once again, Control P and you hit object and there you are ready to go. As you can see, you don't need to do any animation because it's already done. The only difference is this. If you want to get the still image, you go to render, render image. If you want to get the animation, you go to render, render animation because everything is already set up for you. So if we go to the render properties, to the to the render properties exactly, we can see, for example, that it's already done. The setup is already done for you. We have we have the file extension, video, M MPG4 is already set up. Then the last step will be to hit render animation. You will the animation will start render. You will probably need to to wait a little bit for the for the animation to for the render to complete. And once you have everything set up, what you need to do, I will do it with one uh, image, but that will be the same idea. You once you have your animation render, you go to image, save file, and then rename it properly, hit save, and you are ready to go. You don't need to change anything. It's a, everything is set up already for you. So let's say we have this. We have the still, we have the images, uh, we have the Blender file. One last thing I recommend you to do is, for example, you can select your design. In this case, this is a three-piece des design. It's fine. You go to File, Export, FBX, Selected, with everything selected, Selected Mesh, this, and then you export. This will be like your backup. You submit everything properly, but just in case, you, you, you are also submitting the FBX and OBG. So this will be the FBX, and then we are going to export the other file. Once again, export, OBG, and then one, we can do the same, select only, and then we rename and ex then export. All of these will be uh, submitted to the open call uh, on a zip file. Lastly, you want to be sure that you are also sending us your textures. Every time, once again, let, wait, wait a second. Uh, let's say, for example, the, these are your files. You want to make sure that you are also including uh, your textures each piece of your garment should have the textures. This right now all we are only using albedo and normals, but you can have roughness, roughness, metalness, emission, opacity, all of those all of those files. Just make once again be sure you are submitting all your textures. So once you have everything, you zip everything and then you send that uh, to us. Gerardo, some designers want to know for example, if they can, um, can they also add accessories or is just the design? Uh, yeah, for sure. You're free to add any hard surface objects you want. You can use any sculpture tool. You can use any 3D software as long uh, as the final mesh uh, is, is an FBX or an OBJ. Uh, it's, it's not an issue. Feel free to add uh, as much as uh, accessories as you want. Okay, and um, about the, the software, uh, for example, is the design model or simulate? Yes, for example, what we are showing right now, since this, uh, this open mm -hmm. call is design oriented, we are showing what will be the most common workflow. But for example, let's say uh, you want to start, to start uh, another way. We are only showing one approach that will be probably the, the most common one, one uh, between the participant. But for example, there is also another type of workflow that you can start, I don't know, you can start like this uh, and then you can start working your way to, through the design by a total different approach because for example you can do something like this and you can start uh, working your design without the need of going to... If this is totally open to, to the person that wants to... how, how the, the person wants to to start the, the project for sure, yeah. Okay, um, before you was talking about uh, the live, um, can I change, for example, the angle of the video? Uh, no, uh, 
we, we would really like to have the, the same position of the camera. That's why everything is locked. If you are working, uh, for example, on another p with another piece of software, uh, we strongly advise to respect the same proportion and to respect as much as possible the frame. Thank you, Gerardo. Um, I don't know if you have any advice or comments or opinion for ending the tutorial. Yeah, uh, once again, uh, thank you uh, for having me. Uh, try to keep, uh, maybe if you are starting with this kind of project and this kind of workflows, try to keep uh, work the complexity from simple to complex and try to be as organized as possible. Maybe uh, work the design, work the mesh, then move the, do the retopology, move the mesh to Sustan Painter, or you can do the textures on, on Blender too. That's uh, on the second video, on the second uh, streaming, uh, by the way. And then after everything is already made, uh, <laughs> try to place uh, the folders on, on the proper location. And after that, start working uh, the final scene for the presentation. And after that, make the renders. Okay, so thank you very much to all of you for participating in this live. I hope that all these tutorials uh, have been useful to you. And if you have more questions, you can ask here on Discord and our designers uh, will answer you. Thank you, Gerardo, for your help. And thank you again, and the union team and moderator for your times and all the users. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.